Hi and welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Sam and that is my off-grid adventure rig. I took a standard builder's van and I turned it into our off-grid rig. Now we're in the middle of updating all the electrics in the, in the back. We are uprating the battery, we're uprating the inverter system and we're uprating the charging systems as well. So it's in a bit of a state at the minute, but we're nearly there. We're nearly there. So today we're going to be installing, let me pick it up, an XS, a Ryan XS DC to DC charger. But before we do that, there's a couple of things I want to run through with you just to get the basics out the way. Let's just go straight back to basics. The alternator is where we get our power from, and that's 12 volt DC. Now, with a standard alternator, because there's two types really, with a standard alternator, you're going to get anywhere from 13.8 volts right up to 14.4. And that is kind of constant. There is no real fluctuation between that. With a smart alternator, this is the second type, and this is the one that you'll find on most vehicles from 2015 onwards. Now, that was designed to take the pressures and strains off the engine. As a result, makes the engine more efficient and environmentally friendly. That is the reasoning behind it. Because of this, we need a device that will help us harness that energy, harness that electricity, Currently, there are three types out there. VSRs, voltage sensitive relays, it is what it says on the tin. It basically allows voltage through once, it, once your alternator reaches a certain voltage. So in most cases, it's around about 13.3 volts. It'll allow that to charge off. And then it'll cut off around about 12, 12.8, something like that. So that is a voltage sensitive relay. They are proven. They're in lots of vehicles, but I can see them just being phased out in the future. This is a voltage smart relay. Now, if you look there closely, it will tell you the voltages that it cuts in at, which is 13.3 volts, and it cuts off at 12.8. CTEC is another system that we've used, and that is a brilliant little bit of kit, and it is one of the first kind of smart chargers that was brought in. It'll allow you to charge from the solar it'll also allow you to charge from the alternator and it will choose where to send that power you know it, it is quite a brilliant little bit of kit but it is limited by the amount of voltage it can handle and the power that it can handle it just it's that's it's only short for for me i've done a video on installing it i've now replaced that with a vitron dc to dc charger so this is what I, we're going on to now dc to dc chargers are brilliant they are standalone pieces of equipment the CTEC is two things in one it's an MPPT and it's a it's a B2B so a DC to DC charger will allow you to charge more efficiently and what it does it takes that voltage coming in and it smooths it out it makes it so that you've got a constant where you've got your peaks and troughs on this side your voltage is low your voltage is high it flattens it out and it tries to put out a decent voltage Another bonus or an advantage with these smart DC to DC battery chargers is you can monitor the system through the app. Now that app is fully integrated with this equipment and all the other Vitron equipment that they produce. Now you can go in there and you can alter the parameters. So say you don't need 50 amps, your battery won't accept 50 amps. You can configure the output to reduce it so if you want to just a steady 30 amps going in there, you can have that. You can change this to any setting that you want. And I, I think that's an advantage, you know, over what we used to have to what we've got now. These are much better. Another thing as well, the older versions of this produced a lot of heat. Now, basically, they weren't very efficient. Well, they were efficient. They were 87% efficient at doing what they do. This thing is 90... Let me put my glasses on. It's 98.5, is it? Yeah, 98.5% efficient. So this produces more power and less heat. Now that has to be an advantage, doesn't it? It has to be a bonus. If you're not producing heat, that means you've got no, you've got less resistance. So your system is working more efficiently. So there we go. DC to DC charger, this is why we're putting it in our van and I think this is going to be a game changer for everybody 
that is fitting off-grid systems or battery systems to their vehicle. There's a variation on the DC to DC chargers as well. You can have a non-isolated DC to DC charger or an isolated one. Now the easiest way to explain this is basically if your leisure battery system is grounded to the vehicle you want a non-isolated DC to DC charger. If you have a system that is not grounded to your chassis don't know why you wouldn't do that but people have the reasons <laughs> it could be that you're on a boat it could be that that boat has a fiberglass hull or has a wooden hull so you wouldn't have a chassis earth there um, some motorhomes don't have chassis earths um, they have a fiberglass body stuck on the back and the system is isolated from the chassis so there is reasons to have non-isolated ones but for most of us van converters you want non-isolated This is the cable we're going to be installing today. This is high flex 25mm and again it's a multi-stranded cable. Leaves it very flexible and allows us to get it into them tight places with no issues. Nice good radiuses on this one as well. Very flexible and I like I like this cable. I try and use high flex all the time. Um, it's a good product. So to run our cable we use flexible conduit and this is from Screwfix and it's great at what it does. It sits there on the bottom of the van, we run our cables through it and it protects them. And I've had stuff under there four years now and it's still as good as the day I put it under. Slightly discoloured but this stuff works a treat. It's about a tenner for ten, five metres. I think it's five metres. Anyway it's a tenner for a bag. <laughs> That is the DC to DC charger. There's a reason for the dirty face. I'm under the van. <laughs> the new um, DC to DC charger, the 50 amp one, requires a feed running from the front of the van all the way to the back. So we've started um, stripping out the old inverter feed that fed the DC, uh, fed the distribution board in the back. So that's stripped out. The van's up on levelers. Just so I can slide under from this side. So you can see now where we're running the old and the new together. And that just follows its way right down past here, all the way to the front. And that's the last bit to make off. So we're going to push that through now into the cab. And that'll do us. When I was calculating the distance from the front from the alternator to where I'm going to position this, I had to be a bit frugal. I've had to make the cable run as short as possible because I could get away with 25 mil over five meters. That was uh, anything above that was 35 mil. They wouldn't go into the terminals. Now they say 25 mil won't go into the terminals. They will, but you've got to be very patient. So I took my time and I've managed to get two 25 mils in there, actually three, because I've kept it 25 mil for the ground as well. So this is the ground we install for the chassis. Some people will twine and say that that should be brass. It doesn't have to be brass. It just has to be fit for the environment. So you can use steel. We've had no rust in here. We've had no water in here. That has never, <laughs> I've never had anything rust in the back of this van. Look, we've got all these, these are all steel. So as long as it's fit for environment, you can use any bolt you want. People do like brass for conductivity and, and um, for anti-corrosion properties but you can use steel i've used it there so 25 mil if you take your time you can get them into these terminals and there you have it we've got our three cables in our cable clamp sits over the top nice and easy and holds them in place as you can see it bites into the insulation just a slight amount i've heard lots of people saying that you can't get 25s in they are in there that's them in all the strands are in as you look on the bottom there um, there is no stray legs i've cut no cables i've not reduced the current carrying capacity by doing that they are in there and there's no issue now if you're struggling there is an option and it's this this is a 25 mil reducing pin now you install that in there and that will take this down to a six. Oh, 
that will take this down to a 16 mil and what you would then do is just heat shrink that a couple of times just to give it a level of protection and a level of insulation so crimp that like any other lug onto the end of your 25 mil and that just slots in there but I bought these just in case I couldn't get them in and I had no problem I got them in I did mount them in off this wasn't mounted <laughs> so that's that's the trick there mock everything up run your cables cut them to length and then put them in while they are off the vehicle that is the trick we've got 25 mil from the front to the back into the array into the isolator into the Orion the Orion is then connected I've used this link here again let me just show you this so I brought the battery to here these are connected so to cut down on the amount of cable that I use I'm just I've run my ground from here rather than the battery to here and also I brought in my DC uh, DC charger in here linking it to the live that goes back to the battery as well so yeah there's nothing wrong with doing that they are connected on the system if you went back to the battery terminals up there or if you went to a buzz bar on here I'm trying to be what's the word economical with the equipment that I put in here because I see it all too many times people start adding bits of kit and it just runs away and there's no need there's no need but yeah that's our setup so far so we're going to get this working once we get this working we'll then bring in the solar DC now one thing to consider when you are installing your equipment these sliders run right back to here so that there will not be impacted make sure of that but just something to bear in mind if you look closely there is some wear marks there so that's that installed let's go and do the front end stuff there you go oh, just bang the door so this is our current setup so the alternator comes into here obviously charges the battery the battery then feeds out this is the alternator in so the battery then feeds out on all these different legs these are two that we've added this one here is for the DC DC charger that's currently installed which is the 30 amp one and this here is our for our um, aux beam lighting panel so if you've not been here before and you've not seen the work we've done in the past this is the front seat passenger seat of my crafter inverter isolator there inverter there just a little 1500 watt one a Roma battery there under seat unit isolator there so everything's isolated turned off um, we've got a, a 12 volt isolator on that side and that's our alternator that's isolated and this is our solar double poled isolator as well so everything's off there is no power down there this is our cable 25 mil coming from the rear of the vehicle that will now need to be routed out under that seat down there so it pops out here and then we'll connect it up to the battery put a fuse in there and jobs are good I'm going to show you the importance of doing periodic inspections on your electrical system now I was caught out pretty much within a few days of installing a new um, fuse board um, I could smell some burning some plastic melting and I just thought it was the new Vitron stuff that I installed getting hot and uh, settling down when I inspected it it wasn't and I'll show you exactly what it was there you have it that nut there had become loose I don't know how because I talked all these down to the same settings which are around about 11 newton meters which isn't a lot but it's all they need um, that had come loose obviously bouncing around um, you know creating arcs creating heat didn't rupture the fuse but it did warm up all these connections and you know as a result this was broke I tightened everything up and I've had no more issues with it but while I'm in here I'm going to swap that out and put a new board in because that supplies all our outgoing legs to all different parts of the van 
So yeah, just shows you the importance of doing periodic inspections. Right, let's show you what we've done. So gone is the inverter. We've tied it up and replaced that knackered fuse box. That was in a real shit state. I've actually got it out. I can show you it. Look at the height difference there. That's how it should have been. And look how it melted in. That was a lucky find. It is what it is. Loose connection. Good for the bin. Right. So we're tidying all that up. We've now rooted this cable round. I've just got to dress that down with cable tie. That'll hold that in place. But yeah, there's a lot more room in there, isn't there? Shut that over. So that cable comes around there now. We've got a midi fuse there, and that's a hundred uh, eighty amp midi fuse in there. So just like I say, cables to dress in, lid to put back on, float to go back in. Jobs are good. Un. You may recall at earlier on in the year the auxiliary belt tensioner broke and at the same time we replaced the alternator because I thought the alternator had gone and it hadn't um, but we ended up putting a bigger one on so we we went from a 130 I believe it was or a 140 to a 180 so in the back of my head I knew I was going to do all this work so the 180 should be beefy enough to do this job it shouldn't affect anything we do and if it does I'm going to get the 400 amp one the ice cream van one <laughs> that there is a bit of kit but anyway I think we're good enough with what we've got 180 amps coming from the front to the back now we haven't we've got 180 amps coming off the alternator we've got 50 amps coming to the back and we've got 30 amps going to the front so I'm happy with that that leaves 100 amps for the starter battery and everything else that's needed but I think it'll be okay Right, I'm just going to show you something really quickly. That is our MPPT and that is our current DC to DC charger. I'm going to show you the size difference. This is our second MPPT and as I just showed you the size of the current DC to DC charger. So I'm going to show you how big this is compared to the new Orion XS. Now just look at that. That is a fraction of the size of that, and this is just slightly bigger than the current DC to DC charger we have. It's brilliant, <laughs> everything about it. Look at the... it, speaks for itself. It has no heat sink. The MPPT and the DC to DC charger have massive heat sinks that fasten onto whatever surface you're putting them onto. This one doesn't. It has a big gap all the way around it to allow the little heat that it generates to dissipate. It's time to start and set this thing up. So let's go into the Victron app. Let's power up our... Oh, what have I done here? That's it. Let's power up the Ryan. Uh, it's communicating with it. Let's see what's going on. Right, let's update it. So there's a firmware update. We'll leave that to do its thing and we will come back to it later. There you go. Firmware has been updated. I've entered the password as well. So we can now have a look at this and see what it's doing. So again, flashing lights. Let us know it's communicating. So where are we at? Um, input. Well, we have no input. And we have no output. So it is picking up the battery voltage coming in. So there is an input. A couple of things to do before we start the engine. Into settings. Function. Charger. Enabled. Input current 50. Output current 50. Battery settings. Now, if you want to just click on there and select a preset, you can go through here and you can pick the type of battery that you want. So I've gone for the Smart Lithium and clicked OK. Now, if you look at all them presets, they're pretty much generic. So they know that you've got a smart battery. They know that that battery is going to BMS, so they'll 
turn off these functions. Um, this one for me needs to be turned off. So as soon as I do that, it goes into user defined now. And I want to bump that up to 13.6. So it's dead simple, just tap on it, all your settings. And if you're wondering where I got this information from, it's from the Fogstar user manual. All the inform information is in there, straightforward. So we've done that now. I'm happy that all our functions are set. We can power everything up. Right, let's go and start her up. Let's have a quick look at this. So the output is there on the top, and the input, input this is what's coming from the alternator, is 14.2 volts, around about 50 amps, just short of 50 amps, and that's allowing, what, six, 690, yeah, say 690 watts out, and then once it's gone through the DC to DC charger, it is coming out at 678 watts. So there's potential for there for that to rise um, as the voltage increases. But yeah, it's working as it should be. So look at that, we've got 48 amps going in, but we've got 50 coming out. So it's smoothing it out. Let's have a little look at the Fogstar app. So we're currently at 49. Uh, amps going in, voltage is at 13.4 temperature 13 degrees, it is a little bit cooler these days but currently we have the fridge plugged in and the microwave plugged in we've left the system running for three weeks now and as you can see the battery has coped really well it's sitting at 45% and I'll be honest with you, the fridge freezer is empty. We emptied it as soon as we got back, but as a bit of an exercise, I just left everything running to see how the battery would cope. So we've had no um, input going into the battery until now. We have the Orion XS doing its thing. It's putting the 50 amps in, nearly 50 amps, and it's working a treat. So I'm happy that's doing what it should be doing. So we've had that system in now for about a month and I can tell you it's working fine. We went down to Van Vibes Festival about three weeks ago. Um, we had a bit of a rush to get it all finished for that. But I tell you what, that's a festival to keep an eye on. Brilliant venue, brilliant people, brilliant location. But anyway, back to what we're talking about. We, uh, we went down to Van Vibes. We purposely didn't connect any solar up. We left just that DC to DC charger taking care of the battery. Now, on the way down, it, it's a six, six and a half hour drive for us, it topped the batteries up nicely. And all weekend, we used the fridge, air fryer, hair dryers, we used kettles, and we didn't suffer once. I don't think we even got below 30%. Yeah, I don't think we got below 70%. We used about 30% over the space of three days. So that's like 10% a day. We didn't move, we didn't start the van, we did nothing. On the way home, it topped the batteries off nicely again, so when we got back here, there was nothing to do. And that's when I set the battery, uh, that's when I set the fridge up and left the microwave plugged in, just to see how long the battery would last. So we were three weeks in there and it was down to about 45%. So I'm very confident that, that battery and that DC to DC charger and the inverter is gonna get us through the winter months as well. As always, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for watching. I've loved the comments and uh, questions we've had over the last few weeks. It's nice to get back into this rhythm. The summer, well, we had to write that off with uh, Lisa falling ill. And it's just nice to get back into making videos again. So the next video is going to be all about the solar. Um, don't know if I'm going to add any more panels at the minute. I think what I'm going to do is just split the system and have one panel at the front that looks after the um, Roma battery and I'll have a panel the two panels at the back that will look after the beast and I think I think that might be enough if it isn't I'll address that later on but again thank you for watching um, if this video has been of any interest to you or any help to you please think about liking subscribing and sharing the video it is the channel's growing 
the channel's growing all the time and I appreciate that. But when we look at the algorithms, there's a lot of you, there's about 60% of you that watch the videos, aren't subscribers. So give us a click down there and help us. And uh, I'd really like to, before the end of the year, break that 10K. It'd be nice. It'd be a nice Christmas present that. Oh yeah, and we've got a nice big adventure coming. So for Christmas, we're not going to be in the UK. We're heading off and we'll tell you more about that in the next in, a, in the future videos. So we're still in the planning stage. We've got some products that are coming that we're going to test while we're away. And uh, I'm just really excited, really looking forward to it. So thanks for watching. And we'll see you next Sunday. Why not head over and check out our new website, www.thecraftyblinders.co.uk. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and our Facebook group, The Crafty Blinder Van Builds. Thanks for watching.